As far as melodramas go, Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street, drags you through the dark, dingy, plague-ridden streets of violent Victorian London in a way that makes you feel better knowing that you don't live in such a vile, decrepit world filled with repulsive people who will stab you in the back at a moment's notice. Actually, come to think of it, that's not far off many places in the world today, so I digress. Sweeney Todd was a staple of pessimistic urban legends that became popular as a result of Penny Dreadfuls, serial literature that slapped 19th century society in the face with cheap sensationalist fear-mongering stories that manifested the moral panic of a crime-infested United Kingdom all before Jack the Ripper even became a thing. Effectively, Sweeney Todd can be seen as what Les Mis would probably look like if its main characters were delusional psychopaths whose motives were down to pure selfishness rather than defending an impoverished society oppressed by the rich and powerful. Hell, if Sweeney Todd could, it'd probably kill every single one of them. So let's talk about it. The titular character was originally the antagonist of The String of Pearls, the story of a girl called Joanna Oakley who investigates the disappearance of a missing sealer, only to discover Todd to be the mastermind of hundreds of grisly murders where the bodies would be baked into pies by Mrs. Lovett. While The Penny Dreadful was a clean-cut murder story where justice prevails, no pun intended, the musical, on the other hand, takes a relatively significant departure to build a more complex story that sees Todd become a partially more sympathetic character. If indeed, at the heart of it all, he still remains the antagonist, but now with a sprinkle of tragedy to go along with it. In the musical, Todd is actually an alter ego to his real identity, Benjamin Barker, a respected barber who is falsely convicted and exiled by the corrupt Judge Turpin, who then proceeded to rape Barker's wife Lucy, leading to her suicide several years before Barker returns to have his vengeance on all those who wronged him. It is an ugly narrative to say the least. After all, it's essentially about bad people seeking vengeance on even worse people, so there's no easy way to look at it. Considering the origins of the story is rooted in the genuine moral panic of 19th century England, there is a relatively broad sense of authenticity to many of its ideas. It wasn't just the historical account of high crime rates that carried the horrific legacy of killers and insidious people in the dark, somber streets of London. It was actually the fear of cannibalism that had a more tangible effect on a vulnerable and frightened population. Culturally speaking, the rich perceived the poor as practically an entirely different species, treating them as nothing more than wild, vicious animals no different to rats who made it difficult to live a peaceful, lavish lifestyle. Alternatively, the rich were seen by common folk as a species of posh, arrogant twats who were in control of society and had tainted powers to make those deemed undesirable more and more marginalised to the point that it was effectively a crime to be poor. Of course, when society is controlled and manipulated by the rich, it's easy for Todd and Mrs. Lovett to be presented as technically monstrous and sinister, hence their cold, ghost-like appearances, yet the story doesn't skimp on presenting the rich as just as monstrous, only masked by wealthy artificial disguises and awkwardly false personas that attempt to unconvincingly hide their evil behaviour. The concept of cannibalism was purely down to the symbolic idea that the dilapidation of society will get so desperate and violent to the point that people will eventually resort to just eating each other to survive such a harsh, cruel world. It was a metaphor for the perception that society had overcome this uncultivated savagery with the rise of industrialization, except the social etiquette influenced by the rich and powerful was declared untouchable by the supposedly uncivilized poor, making their perceived savagery ultimately inescapable. Although, that's not to say Sweeney Todd is exclusively about class conflict or the poetically twisted degradation of humanity at the hands of those in control of it or some pompous shit like that, it's also just as much about punishment both in the figurative and literal sense. Put it this way, Todd doesn't seek forgiveness because he believes he's got nothing to be forgiven for, nor is he willing to forgive people who they themselves don't believe they need forgiveness either, despite their legal corruption that Todd ultimately can't fairly or civilly dispute. 
As a result, with no power, Todd has to resort to his own methods that just perpetuate the vicious cycle of crime and murder because there is not one single ounce of justice in a world where evil is in charge of said justice. Symbolically, while the barbershop reflects themes of appearance and sophistication, with Todd's razors being the only thing that ironically stayed perfectly clean, there is a recurring motif regarding a bird trapped in a cage that emphasises the faint amount of innocence still trapped in this hopelessly oppressive world. Before Turpin's assault, Benjamin and Lucy had an infant daughter called Joanna who is completely rewritten from the original story and she falls in love with Anthony Hope, who arrived in London alongside Todd and has a surname that's just a little on the nose you could say. Their story virtually goes nowhere and I think that's the point given Todd is never able to say or prove to Lucy that he's her real father given she'd never remember him. And so all he has in terms of emotional attachment is being wrapped up in pure violence and nothing more. However, it does call attention to the story's deep dissatisfaction in vengeance. Yes, Todd gets his revenge on those that wrong him, but it's a pretty anticlimactic affair because by that point in the story, his lust for blood has been exhausted by all the other countless murders he commits just because he's angry at the world. So in effect, he hypocritically makes himself unjustly villainous, especially when a mysterious beggar throughout the story keeps getting close to him before he abruptly kills her as well. Naturally, we must have a twist in there somewhere, and while in traditional standards it's a pretty predictable one, it does bring the whole idea that revenge is never sweet full circle. Yeah, so it probably comes as no surprise to anyone watching the story that the mysterious beggar that stalks Todd throughout is actually his wife Lucy, who survived her suicide attempt via poisoning and went insane. It's a considerably bleak outcome to say the least, and it's only made worse by Mrs. Lovett who tried to get Todd to forget and overcome his grief through manipulation so that she could have him all to herself, which leads to another unsurprising moment when Todd gets a little pissy and then throws her into the oven. While Todd sits and mourns the loss he was ironically now there for, and the heat dies down to a cold depression, again no pun intended, the young boy whose previous master was Todd's first victim and became a surrogate child to both Todd and Mrs. Lovett, takes Todd's razor and slashes his throat, bringing an abrupt and fittingly unceremonious end to the entire ordeal. Sweeney Todd leaves nothing open to suspicion. By the end of the story, everyone who deserved justice is given it via death, and Todd is put out of his misery in a way that solidifies the person he will now always be remembered as. Not as the man who took vigilante justice to a corrupt abusive judge, but as a crazed man who murdered out of frustration and grief, leading to a grotesque pie shop containing the remains of his victims in a horrific legend that will continue to echo onwards. His legacy is somewhat no better than that of the man he sought to kill. It brings about no joy, just the mere sense of unfulfillment in a place where hopes and dreams vanish down the venomous streets that still continue to be corrupted. Todd's actions do not bring about any change in circumstance, but only serve to make his misery all the more regretful, and in a way the musical becomes the antithesis of an audience's satisfaction. It doesn't end with an explosive standing ovation, it ends with a morbid feeling that this entire time we were sinking further and further into hell. At last, my Hi folks, thank you so much for watching. I'm very aware I'm in a different shirt right now. Uh, you could say continuity errors are part of my style, but that's really just an excuse for the fact that I was sick and didn't finish recording this video, but here we are. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get early access, you want to get your name in the credits and vote on what the next video could be just like this one, uh, please do consider heading over to Patreon where for just a few dollars a month you can get all those features as well as get access to bonus videos like Train to Bussin and A Quiet Place and even get into our exclusive Discord chat where you can tell me what you've been watching, what you've been playing, what you've been reading, uh, have spoiler talk, uh, discuss anything in general, and even share your work with me. That's actually super cool. Um, do 
do head over to uh, Twitter and Instagram as well. And stay safe, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.